Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith, Director of Digital Ministries at Watermark Church in Dallas, Texas. And I'm here with Todd Wagner. Hello, Rick. Hello, doing? friends. Well, Todd, I got a question that you, you have a lot of experience. You have about half a dozen teenagers in your house or yeah. something like that. Five of them. And so the question goes like this. Is it okay for a teenager to date? All right. Is it okay for a teenager to date? What we want to do, obviously, is answer the question by asking yourself, is it wise? Um, everybody's got a story of somebody who fell in love with their grade school sweetheart or met their wife in high school and it worked out well for them, so why wouldn't they do it? You know, I love to tell people that uh, not everybody that jumps into a cage with a lion is eaten by the lion. That doesn't mean it's wise. So first of all, looking back just on your own personal experience is not always the best way to determine whether or not your kids should do it. You might have flirted with all kinds of stuff and not been bitten by it or destroyed by it, but that doesn't mean it was wise. And so you got to be very careful. So let's ask ourselves the question, why would you date, period? Okay, we're not really talking about dating here in this real episode of Real Truth real quick. But let's ask ourselves, why do people date? What's the purpose of dating? And so I want to go back and go, okay, we want to answer these things biblically, not my ideas. What's God say? God says, let everything you do be done in love. All right, the Lord tells us that whatever we do, Okay, whether in word or deed, do everything heartily for the Lord. So the first thing you got to ask yourself is, are you at a teenager at a place where you're going to engage with others or invite others into a relationship with you if you are not clear that everything you do is to honor Christ? I don't know why you would want to encourage your son or daughter to um, have a relationship with somebody if they're not at a place where they are where God says a person should be before you uh, open your heart to them or engage with them. So the Lord says that here's my only requirement that I would place on you when you start to yoke with somebody. And that is that you yoke with somebody that's already fully satisfied in me. And so the very first thing I would do as, as, a, as a father, as a shepherd to my son or my daughter, if they're going to begin a relationship with somebody, is I've got to figure out, are they a healthy enough person to have a relationship, period? I mean, any relationship is only as healthy as the least healthy person in it. And so what I've got to ask myself is, are you already secure? Um, are you already a person that uh, is able to, as Philippians 2 says, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, consider others as more important than yourself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. If not, why invite somebody else into your world? And so I, in fact, have a responsibility to protect you from people that are not like that and protect other people from you if you're not like that. Now, Folks are big. We're talking here about they can do what they want to do, but we're talking about teenagers, people underneath my leadership and my shepherding. I, as you know, Rick, um, have spent some time. I've got three girls and three boys. And so I spent some time asking myself, what does a godly man, what's a godly woman look like so I can raise them and cultivate in them a heart of wisdom so that they could be those kind of people that God intended for um, you know, them to be, for, for me to help shepherd and create. And so when I was specifically with my gals, um, trying to figure out what a godly woman looks like, here's what I said to begin with. I said the very first thing that a godly woman is, is she seeks God first. And then the little phrase that I stuck on that is, never buy the lie that anyone or anything other than Jesus Christ can satisfy you. Let's be honest about why most kids date, because it's a time when you're struggling with your identity, you're wondering where your place is in this world. Am I pretty? Am I valuable? Am I cared for? The worst place in the world to go and find your validation, if you're a high school kid, is from other kids that are just as insecure as you are, okay? Let me just give some other scripture as well. When you are spending time with somebody, what you want to make sure that you do is that you honor them in a way that is not drawing them into something that they either have no business finishing or no business entering into to begin with. In, in, in fact, in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, where it's talking about physical relationships specifically and, and possessing ourselves in sanctification and honor, it, it talks about not defrauding a brother or a sister in this matter. So clearly, physical intimacy is not appropriate in a dating relationship in any way. And let me just ask you, what do you think is going to happen if you get two people that are learning to uh, control their heart, learning to control uh, their, their adult body with um, all the new uh, power that is running through that as they go through puberty, as they move into adulthood. 
and they're trying to understand their sexuality, why would I put somebody in a situation where I'm going to um, begin to move towards them in intimacy uh, in a way that if I move towards them emotionally uh, in an intimate way, I'm going to want to move towards them in a physical intimate way. And the purpose of dating, as I understand it, Rick, is to get to know another person so that you can decide if you want to spend more time with that person, so you can decide if you want to spend more time with that person, so you can decide if, in fact, this is somebody that God would have you yoke with. If you've got no intention of being married, no intention of consummating that relationship in a covenant commitment so you can consummate it in every other kind of way, what are you doing? Now, this doesn't mean guys and girls can't learn to interact with each other, enjoy each other, and honor each other, but I think you got to be really be careful as a parent. Is it your own insecurity and idolatry that you want to see your kids accepted? Oh, like how cute they are together. Well, look, it's not cute to put kids in a situation where they've got no opportunity to be successful. Or what success looks like is to consummate a relationship or to move forward in a relationship that isn't going to be ultimately a blessing for them. You should never spend time with somebody if you're looking to develop more security, get more respect, or more significance from that person. And I would just say... If your goal is not to have somehow be validated by that opposite sex, not to have some need met that God should meet, then what are you doing? Well, then you're moving towards them to decide, is this somebody God wants me to spend time with? And I would say, if you're going to do that, I would be very careful when you do it, how you do it, and uh, who you do it with. I wouldn't do it in isolation. I wouldn't do it the way that we've defined dating typically, because you'll end up defrauding them, and you'll end up hurting yourself. I can tell you, while there is a few that have made it through with great purity and without emotionally damaging one another, I can. there are thousands of other examples of people that have not guarded their heart wisely, that have tried to find significance and do what culture would have them do through these kinds of things, that have paid a really steep and dear price. So can they? The Bible doesn't say thou shalt not date till you're a certain age. The Bible does say don't defraud your neighbor. The Bible does say don't do something to or, front or, or toward another person for yourself. And you should make sure that you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness long before you seek to develop a relationship with another person. There's a lot of dads out there that go, hey, Todd, I'm a dad. I have a 14-year-old daughter, and she is begging me to get dropped off at the movies with little Jimmy every Friday night. What's a practical piece of advice for a dad that goes, hey, I just want to keep the peace in my house when Sally wants to go to North Park Mall to the movies? Well, I love the way sometimes you ask questions. When you say, if all I want to do is keep the peace, as a dad, you should never want to keep the peace. What you want to do is shepherd your child's heart. And one of the things that you've got to do is sometimes lead them in a way that they don't understand how wisdom would have them be led that way. Of course, it's natural for kids to want to um, have themselves affirmed and validated through the way that the opposite sex or other friends respond to them. It's just not healthy. It's idolatry. It's dangerous. And wisdom would not have you do that as a father. So I would just tell you as a daddy, your goal is not to keep the peace. Your goal is to be prudent. It says that the naive, it says, um, see evil and proceed, okay, and end up paying the penalty. That's a pretty good butchering of Proverbs 22, 3, okay? But the prudent see evil and hide themselves. That's a direct quote. So I would tell you, Daddy, your job is to be prudent, not a prude, prudent, which means wise, okay? Not a guy that keeps peace. Shepherd, love, and lead. Great stuff. Hey, listen, and if you check out uh, realtruthrealquick.com, we're going to put the characteristics of a godly woman and characteristics of a godly man there for free for you to download and use in your own family. So be sure and check that out, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick. Real Truth Real Quick.